so that we can break. All right, guys, you can hear me. Yeah, there we go. Oh man, it's gonna be snowing the Buffalo game. Um, Do you have the advanced ad analytics showing the Buffalo is gonna be snowing? Guys, why am I showing Josh Allen is out? Never mind. It's a Q, not an O. That scared the turd out of me. <laughs> oh, fantasy relevance. Oh. We also know who needs uh, glasses now, apparently. <laughs> no, I just showed like a cute. You know, on the Yahoo, it has like the little line. The Yahoo? It look like an O. Yahoo! <laughs> Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's do the recap. So the Falcons, uh, we both bet on the Falcons. We lost. You got, you bet on the Seahawks. You lost. Uh, I bet on the Broncos. I lost. Uh, we were overall eight and six for Ripper, seven to seven for Wardy. Um, lots of disappointment. Do you want to get the Cowboy recap? What happened there? How did you lose to the Packers? That was. Uh, is the Pack back? Is it time to relax? Pack's not back, but I'll tell you what I've been saying all season, and you already know that Dak Prescott. I've said it enough times for y'all to know that I'm not a Dak Prescott fan. Do you need a quarterback I, like I Sunshine? Know Dak, I know. No way. Nope. I know Dak it's doesn't play like defense. Sunshine. The defense also didn't show up. To be honest, I mean the defense played for shit. And that's true. So and Dak threw a couple picks. My last week was quite happy. I mean, we didn't get blown out by the Chiefs. We left a lot of points on the board that young teams make mistakes. Um, didn't get you know beaten down by the Chiefs. It wasn't a one score game like the other losses, but um, it was it was a solid effort for the best team in the AFC. So. Not not too upset. Striker, how's it in Seahawk land? I mean, Tom Brady's Tom Brady, but, man, they weren't prepared for the run against uh, um, Tampa. That, and they weren't prepared for Tampa to be able to shut down their run, but we all knew Tampa's defense was good. But, yeah. Not not down and out, but definitely a lick in our wounds. Thankfully, we're going into a bye week. And last time they had a late bye week this late in the year uh, was uh, 2013. Yeah, and, we got the bye week as well. And 2013's bye week uh, happened to end up with the Seahawks winning a Super Bowl. So, yeah, not saying they're not saying they're doing it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, uh, good old Deshaun's uh, gonna uh, come back this week too. Oh God! Is it time to put the I don't think I can use it. all in on the Browns? Uh, this the playoff hopes. I think the quarterback definitely makes a difference, but I, I don't think that they're, it's going to make a difference to where I go. Oh, they're going to make a run into the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. Do you think, uh, do you think he'll have a Hopkins like return or will it be more like a, uh, I don't know, uh, well, a more gradual return? I mean, Hopkins came off like, wow, he, he did he take any time off at all? Yeah. Well, Hopkins wasn't, you know, getting his <laughs> yeah. tickled. Look, if karma has anything to say about it, Deshaun comes back and has a crappy season, but he's an athlete. He's, you know, he stayed ready, game ready. So I think he comes back and he's definitely a uh, upgrade to uh, brisket, but we will see. Maybe like the pulled, well. pulled pork, maybe some, some sides. <laughs> yeah, definitely the pulled pork. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. So. All righty. Uh, so the first game of the week is the Packers hosting the Titans on a short week. Packers and Titans. Packers look good against the Cowboys, not going to lie, especially because the Cowboys' defense is supposed to be really well. Uh, I do know the Cowboys made some changes with, with uh, Parsons, which they probably shouldn't have had. It made a little bit of a difference. But, you know, Rodgers looked good, man. He came in there. He he, he did his thing. He threw his balls, and he looked good. Watson, that, uh, was it Watson? Is that the kid's name? Yeah, Watson with the three TDs. Yeah, I mean, that came out of nowhere, right? Correct. Because I don't think anybody had them on their roster. No. If you roster. did, you were like, well, I have no one left, so I'm going to put this Watson kid in. Or you had a crystal ball or something, yeah. And sometimes that happens, right? You, you, you have a game where someone that isn't planned for at all comes in and has a – a, a big game because they didn't scheme on them or whatever, you know, will it happen next game? Probably not. But in this game, Green Bay at Tennessee. Uh... So Tennessee has got a ton of injured players already out, including safety and their backup safety and an outside linebacker. Is Tannethrill also... playing on this one? Uh, Tannethrill is not ruled out yet. <laughs> yet. That's, that's how healthy they are. He hasn't been ruled out yet, guys. <laughs> yeah, but look, 
offensively, you have Henry, right? So can Green Bay stop the run? If you look at the Cowboy game, no. What's his name? Ran all over him. Pollard. He's, yeah, I always forget names. Pollard. And if, if Pollard can run all over him, you know Henry's going to run all over him. So yeah, that, but so the but the question comes back to do did they stack eight in the box to stop Pollard, or did they have to give up like pay attention to the pass? Because if it's will, if it's what Malik Willis, I mean, they're putting eight in the box. How many how many teams have has Tennessee played that know? All they have is Henry. And All of them. Nine hundred twenty-three yards and nine touchdowns, like, and they and six wins. Like it's... I, I don't think it makes a big that big of a difference. I think that Henry will still get his yardage, and a, a good run game slows down the game, right? So you you have uh, what's his name, Aaron Rodgers. He's a passing quarterback, right? So he doesn't need a lot of time. Obviously, he proved that against the Cowboys to beat you. It's gonna be a good game. I just think that. Watson came out of nowhere, and I, I still don't think the receiving core for Green Bay is that great. And I'm 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 gonna roll with Titans on this one. Believe it or Tannehill not. is a uh, full practice status as of today. So well, that's a detriment to the Titans, <laughs> not a plus. <laughs> well, I mean, our starting like quarterback's that. back. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> Damn it! Now he's gonna want to pass. The ball. Yeah, he's gonna want to throw the ball. We can't just give it to Henry seventy-two times. I'm taking the Titans. In in your analysis, did the Packers finally hear us? Did they did they actually like dial up the podcast and go, oh gosh, we should run these guys? Like, because it sure looked like they did. I know Watson had three touchdowns, but they were running. Seemed like they were running a lot more. If you're going to win that game, and we talked about that, right? If you want to win more, then take it out of Rogers' hands. But if you look at the game, it was pretty balanced because he threw a lot as well. It wasn't like oh, it was all the run game. I think they just finally started running. And again, we've said this before, run game opens up the pass game. Everybody knows that, right? And, and maybe that's what happened. Maybe they started utilizing the running backs. I don't know better. the Packers do that. <laughs> well, they do now. Hey, man, they did it against the Cowboys. And the Cowboys is a pretty good defense, and it worked out for Correct. Us. We'll see. So I guess there's two ways to look at that, right? There is the, the, the Packers are showing that they're still in it. They're four and six. That they win this one to be five and six, and and they're back in it. And you know, relax time and discount double check and all that fun stuff. Um, the flip side you is they seem to be a dysfunctional franchise uh, right now. With with it seems like some disconnect between Fleur and and Skull's favorite quarterback of all time. Um, so. I, I'm gonna go with the Packers just because I hate the Titans. I that, there's really no other reason. I'm, I'm hoping to jinx. They, they looked really good against the Cowboys, man. I mean, Rodgers went 224 with three touchdowns and zero picks, which was big. Uh, between the running backs, they ran for almost 200 yards and a touchdown. I mean, they looked really good, but I'm gonna go with fluke game. Cowboys had an off game. I think the Titans control the clock, and I, I think they win it. Yeah, probably the the detriment of the Packers is this is a short week. Um, which maybe who knows, uh, you know, you never, they're not a, f in my opinion, it probably would impact Tennessee more because Henry is such a physical runner and gets beat up a lot. Um, so I'm going to go with the Packers. I think at home, they, they might, might have some signs of life and try to try to win one for the Gipper. Titans are the upset, baby. Is, are they, are they favored? The Packers? They probably are. No, the Titans are probably favored with their record. Six and three. Yeah, figure figure so. Uh, I don't know. Actually, Green, that Bay's, guy? Green Bay's uh, up, given or uh, minus three at home. Words. So upset it is. Green Bay minus three at home. So if Titans win, yeah. Hmm. So it's basically a coin flick. Coin flip. flip. The good old coin flick. <laughs> Striker and words. <laughs> right. We got we got the the Bears with their their top. 10 MVP running back at quarterback and the Falcons. Well, again, two quarterbacks. It's back to, I think last week we had the same situation, which quarterback is shittier, right? And in this case, it's Mariota versus the running back at the Bears that throws the ball every now and then. Uh, Mariota, how do you look last game? Let's look at the stats last game because I know one of the receivers, London, had a pretty good game. Let's look at the stats real quick. 19 of 30 for 186, two touchdowns and a pick. That's it, Calvin he Ridley. Also, You're sitting on the sideline. He yeah. was also uh, the leading rusher with three carries for 43 yards. So, 
there you go. Well, the running and, game wasn't there at all, but... And their leading receiver was a Demary Bird, who I've never even heard of before. The good old Birdman. What oh, he's been... What's his face? Running Drake back London? For... No, man, the running back. Cordell Patterson? Uh, yeah, yeah, wow, I'm definitely forgetting yards. names. Well, it looks like it got stifled, man, and somebody put a good... Uh, yeah, he's probably, he's probably not. He's probably not back yet, too. I mean, that's probably part of it. Panthers D ain't all that bad either, though. It's their offense that just can't score points. So I guess they did this game, right? They're pretty good. Who was the quarterback for the Panthers this week? Was it back to Baker? Who was it? It was P.J. Ba- Walker. No, it was Baker, right? No, it was P.J. Walker. Oh. P.J. Walker, well, dismal. 10 for 16, 108. Uh, the running back really tore it up. Uh, again, man, the Falcons aren't that great. We've been to this before, right? We've said it before. Uh, neither are the Bears, but again, you're going to go down to who's the shittier quarterback. In my opinion, Mariota isn't that great. Uh, he definitely isn't a running back like Fields is. Uh, the defense, I think, is a little bit better on the Chicago side. So this isn't one I need to spend a lot of time on other than Fields takes it. Herbert is out and injured reserve now, so I don't... Who's the other running back? Montgomery? The, the running back that's got 400 years? That guy. For so, Carolina? Oh man, for the Bears. We're, we're, it's the Bears and Falcons. Carolina is yeah, not. I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I confused when I went back to the other game. My bad. You did. But Bears, the Bears take it. I think Fields is a better running back than anything Atlanta's showing up with right now, and he's slightly a better quarterback than Mariota. Uh, they did lose their running game at, with Herbert, but they have Montgomery. Uh, the defense is better. I just the Bears on this one. Stop Bears. I, how do you so last week you took the Lions over the Bears? Is there any math involved? And in, and in, you were right on thirty thirty one. I mean, we were we were both right. They're bad teams, and no one really deserved to win that. But at the end of the day, you picked the right one. What what did it come down to, and why did you flip flop? Because to me, they're the 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 to beat you, the Falcons are the better team. Fields is the better athlete. Like your first mistake is trying to figure out my not, the way I, you know, that's <laughs> just combined. just completely for curiosity's sake. I will never try to repeat I the magic that is Ripper. A coin. Well, look at it this way. <laughs> Last week it was poor quarterback against poor quarterback, right? But the Lions had better receivers in a slightly okay running game. The Bears, all they had was the fields, right? So uh, a deduction of poor quarterbacks out. Running backs out. They evened each other out. So then I went with the receiving core. The receiving core was better. I liked the Egyptian receiver. I figured they'd win. They won. On this one, Bears and Falcons, come on. Mariota versus Fields, right? Uh, it looks like the Falcons aren't running. Same well. abysmal wide versus... receiver core. Yeah, the same. Yeah, right. I get it. It evens itself out. Same thing. So I'm going to go with the running game this year and say Mariota beats him on his feet. See, last week I was like, Lions can't stop anybody. So, you know, that would that would be the... That would be the kicker, but they stopped. Uh, I guess they stopped them one time is all they needed. So yeah, well, look at the Falcons, though. Come on now. Falcons got peanut butter jelly time at quarterback, right? I mean, the Panthers, who beat the Falcons, had peanut butter jelly time, so the Falcons couldn't, even, couldn't stop the running game. So if you can't stop the running game, and now you've got a quarterback that can run and every now and then throw the ball, I, I think the Bears beat them. I think the Falcons are really that bad. Worse right. than the Bears. Okay. Uh, Stop, I'm, Bears. I'm going with the, the Falcons. I think the Falcons are are a better team, um, and I also don't think see Fields doing. I just don't see Field Fields doing it. like he had a really good running game last week. I don't see him doing it again. The other thing of that is also who uh, the tight end man, Chicago tight end is on fire right now. That's a fact. Uh, Komet, is that what you say? Cole Komet, yeah. Yeah, he's on fire. I mean, that game was a pretty good game. It was a, you know, they were going back and forth. Obviously, Detroit had to make a big comeback in the fourth quarter to win, which they did. I I, I, I saw that. They did. I was very disappointed with that. The only big thing is that the, the, the Bears actually lost Herbert, who I think is a pretty good running back. Um, This is, you know, it, it could matter. Uh, The Battle of the St. Browns last week, Chicago and Detroit, you know, I don't know who's the big brother and who's the little brother. You know, there's two brothers playing, right? And oh, yeah. Brown yeah, yeah. for the Bears. Yeah, and the yeah. One for the, yeah. The, um, the Egyptian think, twins, brothers, whatever. 
the receiving core for the Bears ain't that bad either. But I just think they're they, they are too much for the Falcons as far as the ground game. And I'm going to go with – look at what the, the Panthers ran all over the Falcons, bro. And I think Justin Fields has a big day, and they win. Okay. Stop, Bears! That's why. All righty. Enough of that one. The Browns. So the Browns playing. And remember when we were talking about the Bills going undefeated? The Browns are playing. Well, the Bills are hosting the Browns. How about that? Hey, Say it that hey, way. Hey, you've still got Week 10's pick sheet up when you're not showing games. So I don't know if you meant to have Week 11 up or not. But oh, that sucks. Start off with the Bills. We all thought the Bills were going to win the Super Bowl. I still think they'll make it there. But they have three losses, which I'm very surprised at, man. Minnesota, let, let's be honest. Neither one of their defenses look great. Obviously, when you score 33 and 30, nobody's defense looks awesome. Uh, but I don't think the injury itself hurt Allen. But something was going on. I mean, he went 29. For someone that hasn't injured elbow, he <laughs> can't went 43 even... times. My, my elbow doesn't feel good. Let me throw the ball a bunch of times. Yeah. Don't worry, just keep throwing. It'll work itself out. Yeah. Like, come on now. 43 times. 43. And he made, he completed 29 for 330, a touchdown for two picks. Uh, and then he was their, you know, their leading rusher. That's crazy. I, I just don't dig that. I don't well, know. Well, and he was happen. running, I mean, in the game, he was running with some violence. Like, that, which Correct. again goes back to you're my franchise quarterback. Please don't truck the linebacker. Well, I think he was auditioning. Like, hey, if this elbow <laughs> thing works out pretty bad, I can always be a running back. Like, wow, that was crazy. Honestly, for someone that's injured watching that game, I was like, what are they doing? It was crazy. 43 attempts, bro, and, and six rush. He only ran six times, but for 84 yards, six times for 84 is enough to get your, you know, that other elbow hurt. <laughs> and possibly some other other things. It was crazy. He What's up, Tech? a lot of receivers. He spread the ball around, which is awesome. Um but yeah, that was a weird one, man. And the Vikings. Let's talk about the Vikings. Kirk Cousins, really? I mean, holy smokes, he he, he wasn't any better. Did you he watch? Was well, I was gonna say, did you watch the end of the game? Because that was a a story of two teams trying to give away the win, and neither one could Correct. do it successfully. Yeah, that was great to say the least. But again, Buffalo with three losses. I'm just. At this time, like, my sure pick is always the Buffalo Bills, right? I was like, yeah, Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bills. Now I'm like, man, should I pick against them? You, you said it. Watson is definitely back, right? That's I, I, everything out of, I mean, barring some some people coming forward this week and the commissioner going, no, you're not. Yeah, that's he's on track to start. So, I mean, you, you want to talk chemistry, right? So, you have a quarterback that injured or out or whatever you want to call him. And he comes back. I mean, for in this case, 10 weeks, I know he was still allowed to not work out with the team, but work out in the building. Correct. That's my understanding. Huh? Yeah. That's my understanding. So he's still a professional quarterback. So you're pretty sure he was throwing routes and staying on the money somehow, but still that's 10 weeks of no chemistry with the team, no throwing the ball with the team, so on and so forth. It when you're new back, to that team. It's not like he was with the right. team and then he went out and he came back. He has not been with the team at all. So doesn't know any of their, their you know, doesn't know the playbook, doesn't know their their tendencies. You know, that's just, that doesn't seem like a, I'm going to come back in and, and throw for 400 yards. Exactly. So is it, so if the chemistry is not there and everything else isn't there just yet, it will happen. It will. Will it be enough for them to make the playoffs? Hell no. They're three and six. They ain't making the playoffs. I don't even think they care if he comes back this season or not at this point, right? Um, also, the Buffalo Bills are coming off of a, a pretty, you know, close loss, a loss they're going to be pissed about. I think the Buffalo Bills come out with a just a renewed vigor or anger or whatever you want to call it, and they trash the Cleveland Browns. I think Watson doesn't have the chemistry, and he has a bad game. I think karma gets him in the ass. Well, the massage got him in the ass, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I think he uh, has a horrible game, in the Brown, and the Bills have a big one, so – the bills on this one easily. Yeah, I, I, there isn't, there's, there's very few games that you go, wow, I don't see a way for the, this team to win this. And it's an NFL game, so you, you never can say that. I mean, but with Watson being as rusty as he is and never playing on this team, I just cannot, 
I cannot see a game where he has a great performance against us. This is still a top five defense, right? Even with the injuries, uh, you know, it's a, it's a top five offense, even with Josh Allen's arm, you know, being, being jacked up and they took a seven and one Vikings team all the way down. Right. So they're, you know, it, it, it's a good, it's a really good team. It's probably terrible for Deshaun to come back in this game um, because this might be one of those that you, your fan base sours on you right off the bat. Like, you know, now we're, if they lose this one, they're three and seven, you know, this, this year's wasted. And, and, you know, plus this guy looks like a, you know, complete utter waste of time. So, um, no, I'm going with the bills. Um, it's, it's I'll the logical right. pick. Sorry. I got to run. Be right back. Cats like, just brought a mouse in. Nice. Have, oh, geez. You have to think that the Cleveland fan base is already soured on the Sean. Half of it has to be. I mean, he didn't rape anybody per se. Right. But you know, he's a sexual deviant and, and, Look, I don't judge anybody. If you want to get your tank tickled, that's on you. But there's going to be people, I'm sure, that already hate on him. Now it's sports, though, right? Yeah. If Hunt can go smack a lady or his girlfriend in the face or kick her, or whatever. But you're can. running for 150 yards a game. We don't. We could care less. And that's yeah. That, but that's that's good. the flip side, right? Is Watson has to come in and do well. If Watson comes in and stinks it up and throws five picks the first game. That's not going. You know, there there's. We will forgive a lot of things, but your performance has to line up on the crazy hot scale, right? Like we, right. we will take yeah. all your bad behavior, but you've got to score five touchdowns. <laughs> so you like going two knuckles. I get it. Yeah. Cool we'll go throw four touchdowns and we're all right. Whatever you do. Correct. Right? Yeah. Three, three, maybe I'm not liking that behavior but four, I'm, I'm good. So we, we got to see, I, I do think he's going to have a bad game. I think it's more than, Honestly, I just think it's a lot more than that. I think people are are wanting him to have a bad game. I think there's people that are like, man, he shouldn't even be playing. But I guess we'll see. But I'm definitely going with the Bills on this one. All right. Stop Bills. Stop Bills. I'm going to try to fix the file real quick. Three digits? Oh, my bad. All right. We actually have the right week up now. So uh, you're going with the Browns, I heard. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> no, Deshaun likes the Browns. But that is <laughs> so the next game we have is the three and seven Panthers playing at the six and three Ravens. Look, the Ravens don't have a really stellar great defense, in my opinion. Uh, but peanut butter jelly time, come on now. The, the Ravens are not the Falcons. Let's start with that. Aside from that. Again, you have to say this every week when it comes to the Ravens. Lamar. They're, they're Lamar one Lamar Jackson, Jackson injury away from being a, a, a three and six team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's for sure. But then again, so are other teams. I mean, you can go down the line. Yeah. The Titans are one Henry away from it, right? And and so on and so forth. There's some teams that really are a one, like, you know, the, the Packers are an Aaron jo- a Rodgers away from it. The, there's, you can go, the Bills are a... Josh you know, Allen. Josh away. Allen away from it, yeah. And that's on every team, though, right? I would think every team has a weakness for the most part. Um, but the Panthers are not um, – no matter who's at quarterback, whether it's peanut butter, jelly time, or Mayfield, the Panthers aren't the team to beat the Ravens. And why? They really think the only thing the Panthers have going from right now is one running back. One. That's it. Now, I'm not sure what the run defense is for the Ravens, but they're not too bad. I think they'll be able to stop the run. Uh, is Foreman a rookie? I don't know if he's a rookie or a second year, isn't he? Maybe like a second year. Uh, Point is, that was I, I don't think that the Ravens' defense is weak to the point where the Panthers run all over them. But I do, on the flip side, think that the Panthers' defense is weak to where they can't stop Lamar. So again, this is another one where I, I don't think we have to get a big expansion on. No. But Lamar, I'm going with the Ravens. Yeah, the Ravens are a middle of pack team. And yes, they're, I mean, they're, they're six and three. They're handling their business. They're beating the teams they should beat. Um, they've lost to some teams that are better than them. But the, 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 the Panthers are, I'm saying, bottom five teams, right? They're, they're not good. And, and, uh, their, their offensive struggles at quarterback are, are just, I mean, they're making Fields look like he's a legitimate quarterback with some of their yardage totals. So not much to this one. I'm going to go with the Ravens as well, especially at home. So, 
The ravens. The ravens. The birds. For those of you keeping track at home, that's one one bird win for Ripper, one bird win for Warty. Uh, Lions are going to take on the Giants. Boy, I'm sure you would love to see the Giants fall here, right? Well, obviously, I'm not going to say I'm a uh, Giants fan whatsoever. Um, this game, though, this is a little different, right? Uh. The Giants are not Atlanta. Let's start with that. Right? Was it to play Giants or Bears and I'm sorry, Bears and Lions? Giants are not that. The Giants are a way better team than that. Um, again, flip flop, right? Because I was on the Lions last week, but I do think that you can't stop the Giants rushing. Game. But you Barkley seem to know when to get off the bandwagon, well, except for yeah, the Jets. Yeah. The Jets, you rode that one right on into. I'm still riding the Jets, baby. Again, I'm staying on the Jets. <laughs> Uncle Rico said, stay with the Jets. I'm staying with the Jets. Listen, on the Giants side, though, Barkley's a beast, bro. He's back. If anybody had any question of whether he's healthy and packed, look at him. He's back. He is tearing it up, man. He is having a great season. I think he's going to probably win. Well, he got hurt last year, right, Mm -hmm. as well. So he's comeback player of the year, maybe. I don't know. But Barkley's a beast. Now, on the flip side of that, yeah, the Lions have some great receivers and all that. But they still have Jared Goff. And this isn't the Bears. Again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on a team we don't have to. I think this was a pretty obvious uh, game. I think the New York 7-2 and two New York Giants out of the best division in the NFL, the hardest division in the NFL, the NFC East, home of the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, by the way. The Giants win this one. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> like a self-branded American team? That, that was a <laughs> – no, it's – no, in the 70s, they were America's team. That wasn't self-branded at all. I mean – well, but didn't they like pay to be the only one on TV or something? I thought I read something about that. Oh, I'm sure they they did. They Don't did a lot. Of, I mean, they had cheerleaders and no one else did. They spent a lot of money on infrastructure. Hey, listen, the Giants played to be the only team on in Thanksgiving, also. And I mean, the Giants, the the, the Lions. Lions. Ain't nobody calling them America's team. So let's just move forward. It's Thanksgiving striker. Don't mess with me. Um, that, that's next week, buddy. He's still got a week oh, on that one. My bad. So I I can't. <sighs> I can't – these are the games – like this – the fact that the Lions can win this game and and probably if they play each other ten times, they win two or three times, is kind of amazing about how close teams are in the NFL. Um, I, I think the Giants should win, but I can see the Lions because they're, they're a spunky team, right? They, they're, they're one of those Jekyll and Hyde teams. They can – they can score points, but they can also give up points, and you just never know like when they're going to do one or the other. Um, I, I mean, they're they're still averaging. I think what their defense is averaging about thirty points a game, right? Their offense is averaging thirty points a game, so you know every game for them is a 30, 31 win or loss. Um, I, I the last time I picked the Giants, they choked against the Seahawks, um, but I I just don't see that. I don't see that happening. I see them better. I, I don't don't love Aaron Jones. And the the funny thing is, you guys have a lot of a lot of teams in the NFC East. The Eagles are you know they haven't they played who they were they played who's on their schedule. Um, but I don't know that they're a seven and one seven and two team like I I don't like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. I don't know that the Vikings are eight and one good. Right, I feel like they're more like a six and six and four, <laughs> good, <laughs> maybe seven and three. So, um, I, I'm going with the Giants just because I think that their their running game and how Daniel Jones has been playing should win the game. Plus their defense. I don't agree. Don't think we should spend any more time. Daniel Jones, you mean Barkley? But yeah, I got you. No, well, Daniel Jones hasn't been being stupid, right? Like he and he's also on that athlete mode, right? There, so they're running Barkley, and then Daniel Jones goes, "Well, y'all left everybody covered. I'll yeah. take ten yards." So he's playing smart. He is, and he's not throwing a lot of picks. He's not throwing a lot of touchdowns either, but he's managing the game enough to where he's smart, right? Yeah. Throw for first downs when you need it. Let Barkley control the game. Move forward. There's a lot of quarterbacks that do dumb things on bad downs. Like for example, if you're if you throw an interception on fourth down, it, it doesn't matter, right? You were going for it. You were trying to get it. it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really hurt you. 
you're either going to punt the ball or try an extremely long field goal or, or, you know, it, so it doesn't matter. That's a good time to throw an interception. First and goal on the three, terrible time, right? And, and so, um, you know, just like there was a play where a quarterback scrambled out of the pocket and he took off uh, Mahomes. It was Kansas City. He took off out of the pocket and he ran the ball. And they showed on the replay, like, look at all the linemen downfield. That's why he didn't throw that ball. And knowing those things, I, I think makes, you know, you've got to have all the tools. You've got to make all the throws. But on top of that, being smart is a huge part of the game that a lot of quarterbacks just don't do. I mean, things like that are 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 something you see all the time. A, throw, a quarterback throw, and there's an offensive lineman 10 yards down the field, flags on a play, and gets called back. So, yeah, playing smart is important. I'm sure you agree. Agreed. <laughs> Jets versus the Patriots. Oh, Jets at no, yeah, Jets at the Patriots. The Jets. Look, you already know what I'm going to pick here, obviously. Is it the Jets? Now, it is the Jets. Listen, Belichick versus the Jets. We've been here before. Uh, this is a pretty big game for the Jets, I think. Hey, Stryker, think who won the first matchup? Uh, wasn't the Jets. Well, no, <laughs> but the Jets are still 63. <laughs> Patriots are 5 and 4, all right? You look at this matchup, and if the Jets really wanted that validity that they're getting this season, it's beat the Patriots. Beat the Patriots, and I think the Jets, that that uh, monkey uptick in confidence and yeah. that monkey off your back, all that good stuff opens up a whole new door for the Jets. I think they tear it up. Uh, you know, they're not great offensively, obviously. They're really not. It, 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 we all know it's the defense that keeps them in games. If you look at the Jets, I mean, Zach Wilson doesn't look great, right? Mm -mm. Uh, they lost their top running back. Robinson's mm -mm. starting to come alive a little bit. They've got some good receivers. They just make plays, bro. They're, they're talking about spunky teams. This is the spunky team right here. They're, I told you their coach is something else. It's, it's it's that locker room environment. It's that team environment, bro. I Look at their coach and how excited he gets with them, right? I mean, I know that. That's the kind of coach I am in football, right? I, your players love you. They play for you. They'll run a wall through a wall for you. I think that's where the Jets are, man. I think this is a really, really big game. A game I want to watch, personally, by the way. But I think it's a big game for the Jets to to earn that validity, to get that monkey off their back. And if they do win this one, bro, I'd say watch out for the Jets. I think they they cruise, they cruise they're getting to the playoffs and they can make a big difference. In, it can, a big run in the playoffs just based on the, 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 the momentum. That's the word I'm looking for. The momentum the Jets are carrying right now is huge. Now, let's not get shit twisted. The Patriots on the other side are nobody's fools, right? I mean, their quarterbacking isn't great. Their running back's not bad, Stevenson. Their coach is where it's at, right? Like, yeah. How are they five and four? That's uh, that's the question, right? How's that team five and four? Because they got no business being five and four. I mean, With the bad yeah. offense they have, no, of course not, right? But listen, it's Belichick, bro. On the flip side of coaches, right? On the Jets, you have the coach that everybody loves. On the flip side, and the Patriots, you know a lot of those coaches don't love him, but he, he's a coach they respect and, and, and trust and so on and so forth because Belichick knows his stuff, man. He's just a great coach. This is going to be a big game. I'm still going with the Jets. Even if I wasn't riding uh, Uncle Vinny, Uncle Rico's coattails, I would still pick the Jets in this one because I like the way they're playing. You know, I'm not basing this on stats or whatnot. I'm basing this just on that team and the – momentum and the drive they have going right now. This is a big game for them and they're going to execute. And I'm going with the Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets. Jets. Yeah. I, I thought at the beginning of the year that the Patriots would have a losing season and I thought that they would split with the Jets. Um, You just didn't think they would be... That that this, the split that would be this way. Yeah. No, I, I didn't see the Jets being the 6-3 and three team. I saw them being an improved team because they were, again, they were really bad on defense last year. And just solidifying that and going from really bad to average or above average was a big step in the right direction. Plus, getting rid of the coach they had and getting the new coach, that was a big deal. You know, that makes a big difference. But what I see right now is that who on the Jets are going to score? Is it Belichick's taking that one of them away? Just period. And he's going to decide either Wilson, which I don't think it's going to be, or the run game. I don't know. He's smarter than I am. He's going to pick the right one, and I don't. I don't see how the Jets win. Now, on the flip side, this is not. You know, this is the, the Patriots have no room for error. Like it, it could be a six-three game because um, they don't score either. But um, 
I, I just see Belichick at home, one of those kind of cold games where this is the, this is what the Patriots do, and I, I, I see him I see him taking it out. So 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 let me ask one question: If on a six three game, do you take Belichick or do you take any opposing coach? I always take Belichick, and I will take him over Pete Carroll because he is just. If you've got a game on the line, he's the guy you want coaching. I hate the Patriots with a passion, but Belichick is a hell of a coach. Well, and the question is how much of those 6-3 wins have been Brady and how much of them have been Belichick, and, and you can go back and forth on that. But he also, you know, if you look at his history, he also had the Browns at like a 10-win team and in the playoffs before he came to, to New England. Um, Belichick's a bad dude, no question. Yeah. But again, I think the momentum that the Jets are riding, I just – I get the you. momentum they're riding, man. That whole, oh, I think this is a game they come up for and they kick some ass. J-E-T-S. All right. Yeah. I like it. I, I, I mean, the Jets are harmless. I like them. What are the odds on this one, Strikey? Who's favored? Uh, New England by three, but at home. So, coin flip. Mm, Uncle Rico going to make some money if they win. <laughs> Well, the so, over/under on this, the so, over/under on this is thirty-eight. I think he's up to what seventy-five hundred right now. Yeah, I was gonna say he bet big on the the Bills game, and then they won again last week, right? Oh, the Bills game was the reset game, wasn't it? Yeah, a thousand dollars. That's but but they were big underdogs on that, right? Correct. He won seventy-five hundred or something like that. Okay. So he's he's letting it ride apparently. So against we'll against the Patriots, who they lost to a couple weeks ago. I mean, hey, love Uncle Rico. Rico, hope he's right. I don't think he cares, but, right? I mean, he's he's going to piss it away anyways. He's yeah, weird. okay. He also wears rhinestones, bro, so. The Commanders, who why, took out the undefeated magic? Philadelphia Eagles, are playing the 1-7-1 one, one world beaters, the Houston Texans. I have to get you a picture, Strike, and you'll understand. He's very eccentric, bro. He's not gay. He's just eccentric as hell. I would really like to know how Washington, and I'm just going to call him the Washington football team, is five and five. Because they're wow. they're Jekyll and Hyde, dude. They go they... back and look at their schedule, right? I mean, that'll tell you for sure how. But you know, you can pop it up right now. They can <laughs> play. Where the Commanders play? They played the Jags. We go on. Well, there's a win. Beat the Jags, uh, beat the Bears, the Packers, the Colts, and the Eagles. They lost to the Lions, the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Titans, and the Vikings. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man, hold on. They seem like a perfectly average team. They are. I mean, they, look, they're losing the teams that are better than them. They beat the, the, the Colts. Okay. The Packers, when they were down, fine. Uh, Minnesota. Oh, they lost to Minnesota. My bad. Uh, e, wow. I don't know how they fight. <laughs> they beat bad teams, obviously. Uh, this game, though. Oh, they beat the Eagles last week. That that gives them at least a point, right? I mean, they were undefeated. Well, yeah, but look, we've, we've talked about that, right? NFC East rivalries. I mean, that. Yeah. you know how big and how they step up for those games. Uh, those are always big. No matter what their records are, the, 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 the Washington, Dallas, Giants, Eagles, when those teams play each other, they could be – one could be 0-13 and, and – and, you know, There's it, the blood will be spilled. Play. Yeah, those are big rivalry. Games. I I remember you guys. Um, the Redskins were really good. I think the year that you guys were either. Yeah, we won the one game. Well, the one game it was against them, right? Yes, it was uh, Steve, whatever his name at quarterback. Deberg. Deberg. One game. One game. Anyways, this game though, Houston, mighty, mighty, mighty Houston Texans. The only, the only thing the Texans have going for now is Pierce, man. He's a great running back. I think he's it's too bad he's on a bad team, but that guy can run. He's got 772 yards and three touchdowns on the ground, but he put up he puts up great yards. The unfortunate part is they have a, uh, you know, the serial guy David Mills uh, for for quarterback who was bad. who is probably you know a middle of the road quarterback that has no pieces around. I mean, like it's the opposite of Tua, right? Like if you question if you drop him into the Dolphins offense. Does he put up numbers? No. I don't think he... Look, I know he doesn't have pieces around him, but he's not a very good quarterback in general. Just watch him play. His decision-making is horrible. Look, pieces or not, you have 11 touchdowns and 9 picks, right? Picks don't happen because... Well, some do obviously tips and stuff, but if you've seen a couple of his games, he just makes bad decisions. 
And I think that the, the Texans are just like, well, you know, we, we don't really we don't have, have anybody any else. <laughs> uh, let's get this guy. Or we're going to go up Striker, row seat nine. five. I mean, <laughs> David Mills, Kyle Allen, and Jeff Driscoll are your quarterbacks for Houston. Correct, yeah. So, like... <laughs> It's like, whose name do you like, Middle? Mills is short, and it costs us less to put it on a jersey, right? <laughs> it's crazy. That's funny. Dude. So, 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 but you, so you don't think, so in the NFL, there's windows, right? And, and the worse your pieces are, the harder those, like right now in Miami, you throw a screen past the hill, and he could take it to the house. You could throw a screen past the waddle, and he could take it to the house. You don't have to have good decision making. Like, they're that the good at. The other problem on top of that is Cooks doesn't want to be there, so he's playing and running routes sloppy. He yeah. doesn't want to be there. Correct. Nico Collins is off and on. When he's on, he's not bad, but he's very off and on. Just not bad, right? He's not he's not a world beater by any stretch. No, I mean he's he uh, this isn't his first year. He's been around. Uh I mean, let, let's not spend too much time on a game where we know the Houston Texans suck. However, this gut feeling of mine oh, boy. is weird. Tells me that the commanders are going to choke on it for some reason. No, uh, it's it's a, a, a emotional high off of winning it. Right. And a, I mean, this is the complete time to do it, right? Is is and and it's not like they're world beaters, but by any stretch, right? I mean, they got you know you can laugh about Mills, but they got Hinky on the other side, right? Heineke, Heineke, whatever his name is, whatever, Heineke boy. Tyler. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a 500 team. It, it's an average team and, and it's playing against a below average team. So yeah, I would not be shocked for the and Texas win. They barely lost to Minnesota. To the, the Vikes? That's commanders. Or the commanders? commanders. Yeah. Again. I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't love Minnesota. I've already said that. So. Commanders aren't great in but they were playing, you know, an NFC East game, and those games are going to be big. We talked about that. The Texans are definitely horrible, but I, I don't know, man. I, if you look at the Texas games, they're not getting necessarily blown out. Uh, they're losing games, some of them by seven points, three points. Some they do, like against Philly, they got blown out, obviously. But the games aren't far as far as scores, so. I don't know why this isn't based on stats or anything else. This is just based on total gut. I'm going with the Texans, believe it or not. Giving giving uh, Wardy a chance to say this is a stupid effing game. Uh, or- I can I can see that they're at home. Uh, the Commanders had a big win, you know, in prime time. You know, you spent too much emotional energy. You come here to, and and you just can't. we're going to beat That's the true. one in seven Texans and show them, and then they next thing you know it's twenty one nothing. I can see well, it. it Example, we went and beat the number 10 team in the state, and then uh, the next week we bombed, right? Same concept. We were just spent, and I just think the, the commanders had a big game. They're going to be they, – they shot their their shot, <laughs> and now the Texans are going to beat them. So I'm going with the they, they spent all six bullets in the revolver. Time to reload. Correct. They went three rounds, and there is no fourth round. Yeah. All right, so our next game up is going to be the Rams at the Saints. Who, who did you pick in that game? Oh, I'm sorry. I was picking the commanders. I thought, sorry, didn't okay. didn't know we need to say. When you said it was going to be a stupid freaking pick, I figured you were like, yeah, he he knows better. It was he given, Roger? Uh, Rams and the Saints. Look, Rams looked horrible last week. That whole team looked horrible last week, in my opinion. Uh, but the Rams are horrible as well. I don't think that the you said the Rams. Saints? Your Saints are horrible as well, right? Yeah, the Rams and the Saints both horrible. Yeah, both bad. Uh, I think that um, this one, you can't. I mean, the only fantasy relevance that the Rams had just went bye-bye, right? I mean, Cooper Cup is out for good. Yeah, um, high, high ankle sprain with the requisite surgery. He ain't coming back for a while. That makes it three and six Rams team. I've yeah. never heard of a high ankle sprain with the requisite surgery to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't heard that? No, that's the new thing. Is like, I don't know. There's some surgery that they do all the time on high ankle sprains. Now. We will rebuild him. Do 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 do. Six. Cooper Cup is out, so their fantasy relevance went bye-bye. There's nothing left for the Rams. I, 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 honestly, I know New Orleans isn't that much better, but at least they have Kamara. Uh, you know, they've got a red-headed quarterback that's not great. Who but... won over the blind quarterback, brought to you by LASIK. <laughs> yeah, well, he does have a, still a good receiver to throw to. I, 
Not a lot of strength here. You know the Rams are going to lose. They have nothing left. Zero fantasy. How much confidence does it give you as a quarterback when you get beaten out by the other bad quarterback? (laughs) And how bad do you think Hill feels? Like, you know, I play quarterback too, guys. (laughs) So... The right. Saints. The Saints. Um, so, from a fantasy point of view, though, what do you do about Cup if you've lost Cup? Like, where where do you look? Because Cup was kind of that guy. You know, he was the you go. Well, that was a great year. See you next year. There's okay. nobody on like, the Rams that's going to step up and replace him. Um, if you're lucky, try to get the that just for a flyer chance. Try to get the, the receiver from Green Bay, Watson, which probably isn't available. Um, I'm looking in the VX9 league right now. I mean that's pretty. Strikers odd. taking real time yeah. fantasy advice. Oh, frick! Brave already got him. Yeah, you'd have to jump on that. One. And and They're, come on, that's an over. Sense. That's the overreaction of the week. If he does it you know, like three weeks in a row, then I'll be like, well, I was wrong. But it's no. worth a flyer. Though. Yeah, worth a flyer. I think we're gonna do that later. I think one of the problems with the VX9 league is we don't have a waiver period. It's just free and open. Yeah, I think we change that next year. But uh... either way. Um, I don't know what you do. Honestly, I would say maybe Garrett Wilson, but uh, he's gone. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually legit asking because I'm eight and two and leading the league, but I just lost my number one receiver. Going well now, what do I do? It was it was a nice run, buddy. Enjoy that eight. Take a snapshot beat, of the eight and two. You beat me by six points. You beat me by six points. Take, well, take, because I lost Cup. I know, and I lost. but now you're you're down your down spiral is coming without Cup. No, not not really. Well, look at your team. <laughs> It's not pretty right now. No, not this, Jimmy Brady. You got, dude, you need more than a receiver, home slice. Dude, tell Your me about it. Your quarterback's on bye this week. Uh, yeah, so is my whole bench. Your running back at today's on. Oh, man. Oh, man. and you lose the. Why couldn't I play you this week? <laughs> Jesus. Who right. is playing you this week? Book uh, Dano. Book Dano. Oh, poor Dano. And, and Dano only has 80 points projected, too, which is like nothing. All right, back to the game, because I want to get done sometime tonight. The important part, uh, so I actually think that the Cooper Cup problem is a problem. The big one. So, no, 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 the flip side. I think he he threw to Cooper Cup too much. I think the offense ran through him, and I think that was a problem. He is going to have to spread the ball out. And one of two things is going to happen. Either Matthew Stafford is done, so he won his ring, and the odometer has gone off, and he needs to arrive in the sunset like Brady... Rodgers and all the other quarterbacks that we said. Or, number two, he's actually going to have to spread the ball out. And he's, I think he's got some he's got some playmakers. Robinson's a playmaker. But he hasn't ever looked his way. He's been staring down Cup. And I think the Rams are going to win because they're both bad teams. Listen, Wardy. When you played back in the day, you played football at school, recess, whatever, backyard, whatever. And everybody's picking teams, right? The first kid you go for is the best athlete if you have the first pick. Because everybody behind him is Fat Timmy, Slow Bobby, and Blind James, <laughs> right? So the problem with the Rams right now, Cooper Cup is gone. It's not that he's just looking at Cooper Cup. It's that everybody else never gets open. Oh, that's just, just not – I have – no, that's just not true. And I've seen, <laughs> I've seen plays where he has thrown into Coop with triple coverage because he feels a connection with him and he's going to go up and get the ball. And he does. Like, what is it? 80% of the plays are going through Cooper Cup. Well, then that's what I told Stryker. Right? If that's the case, then who else is up next? Allen Robertson is one. Uh, Higby gets the ball. Everybody Matt spreads Jefferson it out. Because what happens on the defense then is you don't know where it's going. Like, it's too simple to go, hey. And, and, and the fact that NFL defenses don't do more of this I, blows me away. But if you're playing the Rams and they've got Cooper Cup, what are you doing? As a coach, I'm putting two on him. Just all yeah, the time. Yes. You're Let going you to go with Cooper Cup. That's fine. But if you're in this game, you're the Rams. Your best quarterback isn't playing. Who the hell is going to throw to anybody else? They're, you're they're playing bet. backup quarterback. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. It's the offense is actually going to function like an offense. They're going to go through reads instead of forcing the ball to look at the, the X receiver. That's that's what I think is going to happen. And again, we're not talking. We're talking Andy Dalton on the other side. It's not like, not like we're you know vintage so Tom are you Brady. The Rams? I am taking the Rams. Oh shizzle! This is going to be a good one. Rams, and then uh, and watch Aaron Donald say hello, Alvin Kamara. Welcome to oh, my world. Yeah. 
Who who's do y'all know who John Wolford is? He's the you guy that played last last year for like the last game of the Ram, with the Rams. Yeah, I've never heard of the guy. He's Did from he Wake football? Forest. Uh, he was a quarterback at Wake Forest, Wake Forest, but he's his third season. He's 27 years old, so he was definitely an older coming into the league guy. Like we'll Saint Noah, what was the Rams quarterback? The old one, Jared Goff. Nah, man, the old man that won a Super Bowl with him. Oh my God, I'm Kurt so Warner. Kurt, Kurt Warner. Kurt, yeah, Warner. Kurt, Warner. No Kurt Warner. Story. Sorry, we needed to know that at the time period. I was like, well, where, where are we going with this one? We're, are we doing like Chris Everett? Like I don't. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't know which analogy we were gonna use. Are we doing pre the Rams moving to LA or post? Oh man! <laughs> Would you Anyways, did you did thing. you ever see the one with Rome and and Everett? Yes, yeah, where they got all rowdy with each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. So, okay, uh, we won't be calling him Chris Everett. <laughs> no. I do not want to get my tail beat by a seventy year old quarterback. So I'm going Rams. You're going Saints. Plays tennis. Oh, that's what he was calling him, though, Chris Chris Everett. He was that's... calling him on purpose. Yeah, but wasn't Chris Everett a tennis, female tennis Co- player? Correct. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. why he was saying it. He correct. was calling him a girl. Gotcha. And Wardy's viewership has dropped to one. No, I'm at seven. <laughs> he went up. He went up. They're like, there's girls. All right. Uh, the next up in the line are the 8-1 Eagles playing the 4-5-1 and one Colts. Wow. Well, Matty Ice is back, correct? He played last week. I mean, Jeff Saturday was drawing up plays in the chalk. Like, who needs who needs coaching experience? I went to the school of Ripper. He's like, you're <laughs> the peanut. You're the piece of paper. Go, go to you're the, the trash can. Float. You run to the Buick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, listen though. It, it, for all, I mean, for all you can say. He came in and won a game, right? I mean, it is what it is, but it wasn't all just Saturday. I get what people are saying, but there's offensive coordinators, all that good stuff involved. I, I think it was just a change in, in not environment, just the overall change, right? Like, hey, they got rid of one coach. We have a decision as a team. We either bomb or we rally, uh, you know, mm-hmm. rally behind this guy and, and do something. And the first thing he did, he brought back Matty. Yeah, was, sorry, I have the hiccups all of a sudden. But he did bring back Matty. Uh, what was the scores last week? Let's go look at this one. Let's go look at the stats on this one because my statistician is which gone. any sane guy no, would I'm do, to right? Find the stupid game on the correct. Now, I think that's one of the biggest things that that Saturday said. Like, hey man, if I'm coming into this, I'm going to bring back a true veteran quarterback that I still think has some gas in the tank. Blah 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 blah. And he didn't do too bad. He went 28, 21 for twenty eight, two two hundred twenty two yards. One touchdown, zero picks, right? Yep. Uh, he, he was very careful with the ball, I'm sure. He only missed seven. I think Matty Ice knows it, too. Like, hey, I got a chance back in the room. Let me let me do something with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonathan Taylor came alive as well and started running the ball. Matt, Matt Ryan ran in four uh, carries for 38 yards and a touchdown. Matt Ryan he, shut off the wheels. He's like, I, Fields isn't the only running quarterback. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> but... You know, did, you, did you ever hear the one about Manning? Um, Strahan was telling him, he was like, um, so Manning took off to the right out of the pocket, and I went to go get a Gatorade, and I drank it down, and he's still <laughs> like running, and then I got another one, and he's, he's but he only went like five yards. <laughs> so I, Matt Ryan's kind of the same, same, same speed level right there. True. So, I mean, the, I think the team just rallied behind him, bro. I think Matty Ryan came out with a renewed energy saying, like, hey, you know, I got benched. I got to prove myself. And, and he came out and did that a little bit. On the other side, you know, Dave, Derek Carr, David Carr, whatever you want to call him, didn't do too bad either. He missed a lot more. But he had 248 yards and two touchdowns and zero picks in that game. Who's this? Uh, the game last week. Raiders. Uh, the Raiders. Yeah. Derek, Derek Carr. Derek David. Sorry, I was, I was, yeah. Just confused so, by the ghost of Christmas's though, past. Listen, defensively, we know that the Raiders weren't that that great. So yeah, the Colts look good. Um, this game though, Philadelphia's defense is a lot different. What that means for Matty Ice? Look, Matty Ice is on. He's on a new showcase, bro. Matty Ice has a decision to make here, right? And that decision is: Am I going to come out and be a baller, or am I going to go out and bomb? And my career really is going to be over because if he comes out and bombs hard against the Eagles. He's going to find himself back on the bench. You know, Saturday, one is an interim coach, right? So yeah. So, head coach. 
he also is auditioning for the full-time job. So we'll see what happens here. I don't think the Colts will rally enough to beat uh, the Eagles. I think Matty Ice had a nice little showing against a poor defense in the Raiders. Uh, the Eagles are just a whole, whole other animal. Uh, obviously, they, they lost to an NFC East team, but that can happen in our inner division. I think they come out here and they smack Matty Ice around. Matty Ice can be like, maybe I'm going to start thinking about retirement again. So, but. so how, I mean, how, how does it get to this point? Because in my head, the Colts were, they were bringing in a quarterback, just like all the other teams have done the past few years that have won the Super Bowl, that's a top-tier quarterback. They had a great offensive line, a great running back. Their offensive weaponry at wide receiver and tight end, not the best. Still, you know, I still don't think they're very good. And they had a very good defense. Now, they've had some injuries. Um, Taylor's not played well. The line has not played well. And I think Matty Ice had to learn an offense that was different enough that it took him a while to do. With all that being said, they look lifeless and listless with the you know Reich. They get rid of him. Saturday comes in, no coaching experience, and wins a game. Um, again, it is the Raiders. It wasn't, you know, so it's, it's not like they beat... You know the Vikings or, or the Chiefs or whatever, but um, I, I think said you know anyone I guess when you, I guess coaches try to do this and and they think about well you know if I put this guy like Sam should not be starting over Ryan like no <laughs> it's like he's it's not the future you're just you're pulling out you know a, a substandard quarterback and maybe Ryan isn't what he used to be but he's still better than than Sam so. That decision was puzzling to me. You, you ride the quarterback. I guess he just was scared of his job, and he was trying to do anything he could. Um, end of the day, Saturday coming back, I, I think this team still has Jonathan Taylor, a really good offensive line, and and I think they have Matt Ryan, who's starting to learn how to play in this offense. And I think they're going to beat the Eagles because I think the Eagles aren't that good of a team. We uh, talked about well, them. We've talked about that, but I think their, their defense is too much for the, for the Colts. I agree with you, and I agree with everything other than the fact that Ryan – look, Saturday as a coach, bro, he walked into uh, – A good situation? Like, correct. He's a Barry Switzer, bro. He's a Barry Switzer. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, right? yeah. Cowboys 95 won a Super Bowl with Barry Switzer. Coach had nothing to do with Barry Switzer. Had with everybody that was there already. Correct. You know, the, the, the coaching staff was already – I mean, there. Troy Aikman, you know, all but and, – and Aikman's too classy to say it, but he seed at having Barry as his coach. Correct. So – and maybe he is, but they still won the Super Bowl that year, right? Roger. But Saturday is is walking into a system with all coaches already in play. He just went in there, hey, yeah, hey, meeting room. Cool, you guys do what you got to do. I'm going to Twitch tomorrow over here. Like, he didn't do much, bro. Correct. Let's be honest. They did rally behind him, and that's cool. And and he, he, he definitely is a person that the players love, and you can see that. Obviously, they know him. But – I think the Eagles step it up on this one. I think the Eagles had a, again, that emotional turn, right? A big loss. They want to come back and kill somebody in this team. They're going to kill Matty ice. I think he is a very good quarterback, but I do think he's old and all these old quarterbacks need to, to, to go home man. they need to retire already. I think Matty ice comes in and he can throw a good game here and there, just like any backup quarterback at this point. But the Eagles are going to be too much for them. Is it old yellow so, time? Could I put him out it, in Grandpa's it, farm? It, it's old yellow time, yes, sir. <laughs> He's got to go, and the Eagles are going to be that that team. All right, we got the Raiders at the Broncos. Jesus. Really? Do we have to do this? Do you feel bad? Do you feel bad at all for the Raiders? Like, because they have lost why? how many games by, like, four points? Every one yeah. of their seven has been, right? Every one of their seven, they lost by a touchdown or less. Well, I mean, that's finishing games too, though, right? I mean, you have to be able to finish games in the NFL, especially. And not and beat the losing, cameraman when you lose, right? Well, that too. And, and that's the thing. It's not like they're missing pieces, bro. Jacobs is having a, a season because he's on contract, and he's going to have a season. We've, we've heard this somewhere before. <laughs> You've got Devontae Adams, a big-time receiver. Uh, Carr isn't doing too bad. You already know what the problem is. I think Carr is not a great quarterback. He's not doing great, but I think he's just eh. – I don't know if he's that I'm going to lead team kind of quarterback, right? But the biggest defense with the Raiders, in my opinion, the biggest problem is the defense. Um, if you can't finish games and your defense ain't finishing games, if your offense is putting up points and you're still getting beat, 
you got a problem, and it's on the defensive side of the ball. Now, on the flip side of that, the Broncos. Broncos defense looks great, right? But they're still losing games, and the problem for the Broncos isn't their defense, it's their quarterback. Uh, man, Russell Wilson's done, bro. I, I don't know why anybody even thinks he should still be quarterbacking. And it happens, man. Quarterbacks get old. They lose a step. They're just not in it anymore. Oh, because who's, their, Wilson... because who's their backup? That, that, I mean, that's why. Correct. And... Yeah, exactly. It's the guy from C42 Row 5, right? The, 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 it is what it is. Russell's, in my opinion, Russell is done. It, it's If you watch him play, some plays are pretty embarrassing for him. But, I mean, do, when do they stop running him out? Because they have spent so much money on, on him. Next They're year. Puck committed, bro. Yeah, they yeah next year you can't you them. can't not do it. Nah, that, and the same thing with the Colts, though. We were going back to that. They're kind of pot committed with Matty Ice also because they spent some money to bring him over as well. Uh, but Russell, in my opinion, is done. I'm not trying to be, you know, a, a, a jerk about it. Um, but you look at him play. I mean, Stryker, you were a Russell Wilson fan. You're going to tell me that's the Russell Wilson that should no. still be playing football right now? Oh, God, no. God, but no. What, is I, he, what is he not doing? The Everything. game looks like it's too fast for him now. Correct. And, and he, what do you think that – do you think it's because he's playing in a completely different system that he hasn't gotten down yet and he's not the sharpest tool in the shed? Look, no, I, I think he just doesn't have – his game was never predicated on making great reads. It was always on his legs, getting him out of a situation, and then winging it downfield. He's and that's an athlete. Not, yeah. An athlete with a cannon arm, right? Well, was, right. Though, right? You, you go play, say you go to the park and you're playing a pickup basketball game, right? You, you put teams together no matter what. You always know the one guy that everybody wants in the team because he's a beast at basketball, period. But then, you know, fast forward 10 years there, he's still not that. He's not that same beast anymore, and he's not being picked for every team. But an athlete should be able to jump in. If you're a true athlete, a really good athlete, you jump in and you're still making plays because that's what he was in Seattle. He made plays with his legs. He moved around. He did things that looked great. He didn't I don't think they come here to Denver and all, oh, you know, the offensive scheme. Is, bro, they brought him over here. You know damn well they're going to scheme to his strengths. And if his strengths aren't there no more, then you get what you get. And that's what you're seeing right now. And you're right. Pot committed. They're not going to change it out at the end of the season. They're like, at this point, they're like, well, we spent all this money. It might as well be for a draft pick, which they lost too, didn't they? They mm. draft away the first mm. round. Yeah, that's so a screwed. that's a Seahawk pick. It was a yep. huge mistake, and the Seahawks knew it too, man. They're like, "Oh, you want to give us all that for Russell? Here you go." I'll even throw in a third round nobody. I mean, ugh, it's bad. I mean, man. I you, you want to talk me. about like a fleecing of a deal? That deal looks better and better every day for Seattle. Well, it's, it, it goes back to the uh, Herschel Walker trade, man. That one worked out for the Cowboys huge. And look where Herschel Walker ended up. Same concept. It worked out for Seattle. Awesome. Uh, it, it's unfortunate for Russell Wilson, but I, I don't see him in the NFL next year. I really don't. So long story short, I think the Raiders get their third win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so this remember, just, just for record keeping, the trade was Wilson in a fourth-round pick for two firsts, two seconds. A fifth, Drew Locke, Shelby Harrison, Noah Fant, and Shelby Harrison, Noah Fant are having career years this year. Well, Noah Fant is a college tight end, so I, I liked him. I thought he was a, a good tight end before they traded him. Um, the Raiders aren't a – so last week I thought exactly what was going to happen. The Titans were emotionally drained. I didn't know the Broncos were only going to be able to score 10 points. Like, geez, they're inept. Like, that's all there is to it. They cannot score. And, yes, it's Russell Wilson at the end of the day, but um, I – very rarely do you see this big of a drop on a quarterback who's not that old. I mean, he's not. He, he's – it's a – but it's – it's wee! He fell off the cliff. Um, You know, not scoring 10 – have they even scored 30 points this year? I mean, they're, they're, they're just bad. Um. On the flip side, the Raiders are trying to give away every game. This game is probably going to be close, and and I just think that the luck comes out that the Raiders have to win one. Like they've tried to give away too many ball games, they have too many weapons. They should be able to score eleven points and win this, and 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 be done with it. Um, especially with Jacobs and Adams and all the tools they said. So I'm I'm going to pick the Raiders too. Um, and and I think part of this is the AFC West. Someone had to be, someone has to be at the bottom. Um, 
I so the only reason the Raiders are at the bottom is because they don't have a great defense, but Denver doesn't have a great offense, so it evens out. Raiders win. Yeah. Well said. So before we move on, I saw a stat, stat the other day that basically said under the Bron- under Drew Locke, the Broncos scored 18 points a game. If they scored 18 points a game this season, they'd be 8-1 right now. Wow. If they only had a defense. Yeah. Moving on. So they should have traded for the Raiders' defense. <laughs> the Bungles are playing... At Pittsburgh. The who's? The Bungles. I don't recognize the Bungles. I know the Bengals. The, the Bungholes. The Bung. And Joe Burrow. The, the Joe Burrows. So, Steelers, Steelers are still bad. However. <laughs> I'm, so, isn't I'm it, sorry. Isn't the Bengals and the Pittsburgh a rivalry game? Yes. A big rivalry. Uh, look. Steelers, I, I can't even go fantasy relevance here because I don't think the Steelers have any anymore. Claypool was maybe at point five; he's gone. None of their receivers are tying anybody. Nobody's doing great. Yeah, Steelers Najee Harris a, is actually running backwards. They're in a hole, man. They look horrible. They look very horrible. Um, you know, they. I, I I don't even know what to say about them. That's how bad they are. I don't know why they're that bad either. I, I don't think it's coaching. He's a good coach. It's just a lack of talent. It's not like Big Ben left and everything fell apart, but that's how it feels, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, they didn't have a lot of talent. Big Ben was kind of dragging them through the last few years, and then they lost a lot. And I mean, everybody left after that, right? You know, so they still um, have pieces on defense, though. Their defense ain't doing that great either. But you, you know, they, so think back four or five years ago, right? They had two two legit wide receivers and Juju and uh, crazy guy. Uh, who ended up in Tampa with Giselle? Um, they had Bell. You mean the the Jujitsu guy? No, there's Juju and I. I know. I was oh, making up that I got. I got you. Got you. Because because Giselle was seen in Costa Rica with some Jujitsu instructor. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, they, they were you know they they the and Pittsburgh has always done this. They didn't. They don't generally. Um, they they keep homegrown players and they let everybody else go. Well, a couple head cases and and you know they were they were out of star players. Um, and then you just haven't drafted well. So, uh, you know, the talent's eroded. But but like you said, this one's going to be simple. The Steelers can't get after the ball. The Bengals, the only way to stop them is to put Burrow on his back. The Bengals are going to win, right? Agreed. I think that the, <laughs> there's no doubt that the Bengals win in this game. I, I don't even know if we have to get into detail. Pittsburgh looks horrible. Even with Watt back, it's just not going to happen. And Watt could make a difference to put Burrow on his back. It just won't happen enough. Correct. Stop Bengals. Stop Bengals. That was an easy one. Yeah. That was the... We might not even have enough time for me to put a chapter mark on that one. <laughs> I think you can go like 30 seconds. For Bengals for here to here. Um, so, Cowboys at the Vikings. Which I would think, <sighs> if I'm looking at the schedule... Mm, this is probably game of the week, right? Yeah. Maybe Chiefs Chargers. Maybe that's coming up next, but mm, I don't know. Chiefs Chargers, San Fran, Arizona is a good one too. Um, maybe actually the game of the week for me is the Jets New England. By the way, no, uh, it's just because of Uncle Rico, though. Nah, I think it's just the Belichick Jets. I mean, there's a lot of history there, but all right, going on to this game though. The the who the cow the Cowboys never heard of. Them. I think I think they're America's team. team. Ah, okay, those guys. Yeah. So this game, man, look, Minnesota. I, I, I still can't believe they beat the Bills. Honestly, I mean they're not a bad team. Obviously, they're eight and one for a reason, right? Uh, Kirk Cousins is playing okay ball. I mean, he's not great. He's fourteen touchdowns with eight picks, so he's obviously not doing great. Great. Um, the defense in Minnesota isn't great either. I, again, if we look at their schedule, it'll probably tell us why they're 8-1. Mm-hmm. But, man, they beat the Bills. I'm still in shock on that one. However, you're, you're right. It looked like the Bills, and they looked like both of them were trying to give that game away, and eventually they did. Um, Cowboys. Uh, that was a tough game, man. Um, I think for some reason, Rodgers always just – he owns the Cowboys, bro. 
That's a true I story. thought it was the Bears. He owns the Bears. Is also the Cowboys. Like, I own the Bears and the Cowboys. He's, he's, he's the Bears and the Cowboys daddy, man. Discount Look, double check time, huh? How many times has he burnt the Cowboys? How many times has he burnt them with, you know, a minute left in the game? Like, things, I don't know what it is with the Cowboys and, and Green Bay, but ugh. The defense played sloppy. They've been great all season. Like, for most of the season, they've been doing pretty damn good. And then Green Bay came in and slapped them in the mouth. And they, they looked like a mediocre defense. I was no picks, not a lot of sacks. It didn't look great. Um, Vikings, again, 8-1. and one. Yeah, they're, they're playing strong. They just came off beating the Bills. This is a game that could be dangerous for the Cowboys, in my opinion. And it sucks to say that, but the Vikings are coming off a high. And it's not a high that they emotionally spent. I think this is a high that's going to pump them up even more. I, I want to go see, you know, who they beat. Um, you know, they beat Green Bay, but week one when they sucked. Uh, they beat Detroit Lions. Okay. They beat the Saints. Okay. Uh, they beat the Bears. They beat the Dolphins. Without uh, two. Two of the Dolphins. Uh, they beat Arizona with Little People's Army. Mm-hmm. They beat the No D Hops. Correct. And they beat Buffalo. I mean, they haven't beat. Eight, they're legit eight and one. I just don't see it like, oh wow, they beat a lot of great teams. They beat, but then again, I mean, they beat a, a good plethora of teams, and some of them good, some of them bad. If you look at the win loss records, probably more losing than winning, a lot more. But this is a game where, like I said, man, they're coming off that eight and one record. They're playing solid football, and they just beat the Bills. I don't think they're going to be emotionally spent on this one. I think they're going to come out on fire. On the flip side of that, the Cowboys lost a tough one. And that defense has a lot of weapons, man. If you look at the defense, I mean, they got Parsons. They got Diggs. Uh, they got Lawrence. They got a lot of good pieces on the defense. Uh, they did. They, they are playing with a couple of rookie co- or, not, or first year, second year cornerbacks because of injuries, which could affect them, right? Or safety in the cornerback could affect the game. Kirk Cousins, though, he's throwing eight picks, man. And on the flip side, on the side, other side of the line, or the other side of the field, you've got Diggs who loves picks, right? I think this is going to be a good game. I but will he pick off his brother? Ah, brother against brother. I see the other one. We forgot about that, right? Diggs yeah. against Diggs. This is going to be a great game. I don't think it's going to be low scoring. I think it's going to go down to the fourth quarter. But I, I, I think that the defense will correct itself. And yeah, I'm a homer pick. Sure. But just even without the homer pick, I think the Cowboys win this one. I think the Vikings are coming out emotional. Sure. But Man, the defense of the Cowboys is something. And sure, uh, Aaron Rodgers picked them apart, but Aaron Rodgers owns the Cowboys all the time. I think Cowboys come out back on fire. The defense steps it up. You see Parsons and Lawrence tear up some stuff, and I'm going to go with the Cowboys. So so defense is one of those things. It it, it happens. I I mean, even the 85 Bears, they they had a lemon against the Dolphins, right? So it it happens. You know, when people forget these are people and they're – They've got real lives, and it's a you know injuries and little nicks and and all that stuff, and every play is a chance for the offense to score, right? And if if you do, you know, one little mistake here, one blown coverage, whatever, one missed assignment, whatever, you know, you give up points. Um, so so those kind of get even the great defenses have those kind of games. Your your defense is a young defense; it's prone to have more of them. So. Um, you still got a very solid defense. The question is going to be, in, in my head, I think the Vikes are spent. I think they beat the Bills. They should not have beaten the Bills. That's that was an emotional roller coaster. The last two minutes of the game. I mean, you go in, you lost the game, right? You've lost the game. You turn the ball over with a couple minutes left. All the Bills have to do is get the ball off their three inch line, and then they fumble the ball in the end zone, and you won the game. Like. They shouldn't have won that game. They should have lost that game. Then that's what Josh Allen with a jacked up arm. Now, I don't love Dak, but I think your defense and your running game and Dak are enough to beat what I think is a, a pretend team. I don't think they're I don't think they're eight and one. I don't I think they beat a really soft schedule and that's why they're there. And I think your six and three is much more impressive than their eight and one. So I'm going with the Cowboys. We probably just jinx your team. I'm sorry, but uh, that's what I think. Hmm. Top boys. The Chiefs are playing in Los Angeles at the Chargers. Hmm. Herbert time. 
Do you like Herbert or Mahomes I better? I do like Herbert as a quarterback. However, <laughs> who is he throwing to? Mike Williams is still out. Uh, Will a fast guy from row five, aisle Correct. 16, please come down? I think that's the biggest problem for Herbert right now is who is he throwing to? He's a great quarterback. Well, Allen will, Allen and Williams supposed to practice this week, so. Yeah, but they, they haven't been ruled in yet. No, but they haven't also been ruled out yet, so. Well, on the other side of that, though, it's Mahomey. And we all know Mahomey can play some football. Um, sorry, my mouse freaked out. All right. On the other side of that, Mahomes, man. Mahomes, 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 Mahomes. Can the Chargers defense stop Mahomes? Can they play a game where you slow him down at least? And then if you do slow him down, again, back to are you going to score points? If Williams and Keenan Allen and all them are back, oof, that's a big difference. And, and now you have a game going, right? Because Herbert has some great receivers to throw to. Um, however, you know, you can say this a million times, the Chiefs have no running game, and they don't. Uh, Pacheco's kind of stepping it up now, but they still don't have anything solid there, which amazes me at how well they play without a real running back. Can you imagine the Chiefs had gotten McCaffrey or someone like that? Or kept Hunt. Or, or, or yeah. Well, you know, he beat his old lady. They had to get rid of him. Okay, right? yeah. Had, he, had they covered up the beating. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. I mean, it had it not happened and they still had him. I mean, they had the running back. So it's, you know, kind of tragic that he's not there anymore. Right. So I, I, if they come back and they, they can perform, I think it's a better game. And Mike Williams and, and Allen, I think the game will be great. It might even go down to the wire because Herbert is not a bad quarterback. I think he he's a premier quarterback in my opinion. However, I don't think these guys come off uh, injury well enough to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the Kansas City Chiefs take this one hands down. The Chiefs. So, I love Patrick Mahomes. I think he is really good, but I think three things. He's playing a team that they've split for the last few years. He's playing in San Diego and not comfy little Arrowhead. And dodging. <laughs> I, I think the running game is going to come back to, to, to bite him again. I, I think... I think the Chargers are the kind of team that can double cover Kelsey, keep the wide receivers from from beating him up, and I think Herbert's a good enough quarterback to match him point per point. I think the Chargers are going to take this one. The Chargers are five and four. They have to win this game. They 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 want they want to be relevant. They have to win this game. The Chiefs are seven and two. I mean, they can't fall that many games behind and have any shot of uh, unseating the, the Chiefs. And and I think the Chargers are just. Just as talented. It, it's it's a bonus of those wide receivers to come back. So I'm going Chargers. There you go. Although I do feel like Mahomes is getting Brady esque on pulling out wins in the last minute. A side note, striker. I just remembered that I had dropped Williams and I was trying to get him back and I forgot and Pop Up Air literally got him like three minutes ago. So, oh, bummer. I Papa Bear of all people, man, dude. Do you like hate yourself now, or? <laughs> I mean, when Papa Bear outmaneuvered you on the waiver wire, does that mean you can yeah, even play in the league anymore? Right. <laughs> does Papa Bear even play in the league anymore? <laughs> of course, he never did. That's the that's the magic of Papa Bear. He does yeah. better with auto drafting and not picking anybody and going with four people not not starting. All right, 49ers at the Lilliputians. Ah, oh, the little peoples. How we love us. Isn't, little peoples. isn't that game down in Mexico City? Are they playing in Mexico? I thought they were playing in Mexico City for that one. Nice. FYI, side note, Cowboys are also Mexico's team. Just saying. <laughs> you can't be America's team and Mexico's they team. They are both, Wardy. Damn it, and if they played more in England, they'd be damn UK's team also. <laughs> They are. There's a lot of. It's the Jaguars of the UK team, buddy. They call them Los Vaqueros. <laughs> in England? No, and in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, speaking of little people, in England they call them El Jaguars. 
<laughs> so this game, man, look, 49ers got McCaffrey. 49ers defense is pretty good. Uh, they still got Garoppolo at quarterback. They got Debo. They got Ayuk. I mean, you look at fantasy relevance in this game. Kittle, use check. They've got, they've yeah, got weapons. Not bad at all. Now, on the other side, though, little people isn't bad at quarterback. They've got Connor at running back, who's starting to come alive again. He had a good game last week. Uh, you got D hops, right? You you don't have 50 50 anymore, but uh, who did they pick up? Uh, they picked up somebody. Yeah, we talked about this about four weeks ago, and he's still as irrelevant as he was then. Robbie, what's his, what's his name for the Panthers, right? Robbie, whatever his name is. Anderson. Robbie Anderson. Yeah. Robbie, I'm going to let the ball hit me in my face mask and not catch it, Anderson. Well, that, one. 50, that one. He's just that as one. good as 50 50 guy. No, because 50 50 deep. guy was 90 yards in front of the defense. So if he actually caught, caught one of those, it was a touchdown. All right, then. <laughs> Point is, this game, uh, always a good game when they play each other. That's for sure. But I think the 49ers really did an upgrade with McCaffrey. And not just McCaffrey, but they got uh, Mitchell back as well. And he had a good week last week also. Uh, they have a double-headed you know, monster at, at running back now. Uh, they do have receivers. Garoppolo is, isn't is high on the yardage, but not bad on the, the, the pick-to-touchdown ratio. I don't think there's a lot of like, oh, this game. However, you know, on paper, the 49ers look like the way better game and the team, and they are. They really are. But, man, there's just something about little people, man. He he, he seems to, for big games, he shows up. D Hobbs is a big time receiver. I'm not saying they're going to win. I'm not. I'm definitely picking the 49ers here. I just don't think it'll be any kind of blowout. I think it'll be in, in the fourth quarter, the little people will still be in it, still have a chance. But in the end, the 49ers will win. The end. You summarized that one perfectly. Thank you. That's exactly how that's going to go. 49ers are going to win. Um, too many weapons. D Hop's going to get 340 uh, and win me the, the championship. So um, that's all we have to say about that. Yeah, I just, and we, and we, I, again, I think he's a very talented midget quarterback, but, but it just, it ain't going to get it done. Like, I, I'm amazed at the guy because, just the evolution, like how that went down is they, they picked a quarterback number one. The, they went a year with Rosen, you know, obviously we're like, whoops, we made a mistake. Got a new coach. He picks Murray number one overall. They junk him off to and broke him completely when they did it. Um, and what do you have now? You're a, you know, a four and six team, you know? Yeah. You didn't have Hopkins a, a lot of the year, but, he wasn't the different, you know, he's, he's not the difference maker. And, and I don't think Murray's going to suddenly take that leap and be, you know, Russell Wilson 3.0. So if you're the cards, what do you, where do you go from here? Yeah. So you go to the draft and get a quarterback again. Like, well, that, that, that measure must be taller than this line to be quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you tell them the bad news is you take them to Disney World and like, you can't ride this ride. Sorry. Sorry. You can't ride the Magic Mountain Express. You can't be the quarterback for the car. All right. Another great week that we probably offended everybody in chat. So thanks to four viewers that are still here. Uh, any last thoughts or comments? I was going to say one more about little people. I was going to say, if the only horse you can ride is a Shetland pony, you cannot be quarterback for the car. <laughs> All right. Game All right. of the week, man. Jets in New England. That's my game of the week. I hope Uncle Rico hits it and wins more money. It doesn't really matter because he doesn't share and he wears rhinestones on his boots and his necklace and his shirts. Isn't that a little so, odd even for Texas? I mean, that sounds like a Cowboys fan to me. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Thanks for coming out, guys. You guys have a great night. I'm out. Shanker. Now that we're off, we are off, right? We're we are not clear yet. You're good now.
I didn't hear you guys were talking. I was making fun of Pop Bear. 